Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. So today I'm talking about newbies. You're finally taking the plunge, invested in an entire new routine that is very different and I get it. It's scary and you don't know where to start. So I'm showing you everything today from filling up your compact for the first time to what brushes I recommend starting with how to use them and literally every step along the way and what I recommend to get the look you want and the finish you want and how to avoid as many troubleshooting things as possible. So hopefully this video helps. If you want to watch it, please keep watching. If this video helped you, please hit that like button. So I know you want more videos like this and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you see my next tutorial as well. Thank you all for being here. Love y'all. All right, friends, let's get started. So a couple weeks ago, I did a Instagram story along the same lines and I thought I got a lot of questions. I was like, I need to do a more in-depth version of that video for all of my girls from the beginning. Like you are new to mascara, you are opening your box for the first time. Where do you begin? one video all in one place. So let's get into it. Okay. You open up your gorgeous box of new makeup and then you're like, okay, what now? You guys, the packaging is just unreal, right? So you got your tens. Okay. They slide out and then you simply pop them in the magnetic compact. Okay. So do not throw the 10 lids away. Some people don't realize this until they've been using mascara a while that the 10 lids have a purpose. So say you have all your colors. I'm just gonna throw them in here real quick. So I'm gonna pop them all in. Doo, doo, doo. And my top layer, okay. They're in. Say you want to like switch out your illuminator or your, a blush color or something like that. Grab your tin lid, okay? Slide it in between and pop up, okay? That way you're never sticking your fingers in the creams, right? So that little tip is a game changer. Okay, so you've got your makeup. You got both layers. I have my full face in this mini double decker. How do you start? Okay. Step one, prep your canvas. Your skin is your canvas. Prep the face. So my biggest recommendation for people starting out is making sure you are using a good exfoliator and moisturizer. Um, that being said, that is true for any makeup. You're going to get a much smoother application. Um, I even have another video I can link below on how I completely prep my skin. And it was a game changer when I started mascara. So it's my three steps for glowing skin. I actually did all three this morning. So my face is good to go. Like I'm good. Um, so I already have my SPF on, that is my moisturizer. What I recommend is always applying your makeup to a fresh, freshly moisturized face that has had plenty of time to soak in. So this changes depending on your skin type. I have normal skin. I put on my SPF slash moisturizer and I let 20 minutes for it to soak in and then I'm ready to go with my makeup. This is something that is going to be different for every single person because everybody's skin type and everybody's skin is different. So try different things and that goes the same with a primer. Um, you might need to wait less time before you go in with your makeup after applying your moisturizer. If you have dry skin, if you have oily skin, um, you might need an oil controlling primer. So in my list of tips and tricks on my email, it has different options to try. Me, I have normal skin. I've let my moisturizer soak in, my SPF soak in, so I'm good to go. And I always recommend applying the makeup for the very first time with no primer. See how it works on your skin before you start introducing more products that you might not necessarily need. 
Me, I don't need a primer at all, but I like to use our setting spray as a primer. And I either just spray it directly on the face or I spray it on my perfecter and then wipe it on. Okay, that takes me to my next thing. So I've got my makeup all in my compact. I've got my brushes. You want to get your perfecter ready before you start with your makeup. So what I do is I take my dry perfecter, okay? My dry, dirty perfecter, and if you've never used it before, it'll be clean, so you don't have to do this. But what I do is I take a little bit of soap and I rub it on my perfecter as I'm getting it damp every morning. So that way I know when I'm applying this to my face, it's free of bacteria and it's clean, and I'm not going to cause myself breakouts by using a dirty perfecter. So I get some soap on it, I then I get it under water, and I squeeze it under running water until the water runs clear and is no longer soapy. Okay, now that I know it's clean, I will squeeze it again, okay? It should have doubled in size, obviously, and then I squeeze it out, and I squeeze it until no more water can come out, no more droplets of water. Then I take an absorbent towel, and I squeeze it again, okay, a couple of times, and then I let it sit out while I'm starting my application, okay? So it's going to be the perfect consistency by the time I'm ready to use it. Okay, so I'm just gonna spray my Stay Spray on first, okay? Shake your bottles first. I'm using the non-SPF version because I used an SPF already, but it also comes in an SPF 30. I recommend this for dry to normal skin and the SPF for dry skin if you're trying to decide between the two. Okay, so for extra priming, you can also spray your perfecter and really concentrate that on any areas that you know you might have issues with touching your face or anything like that. It's gonna give you a more even application. So. Either way works fine. So let's get in. Our skin is prepped, ready to go. Make sure you let that setting spray dry first before you go in for your makeup. So your skin shouldn't be tacky before you apply your makeup or then you're gonna have issues with still feeling tacky, okay? And we want to avoid that. So I am gonna go ahead and prime my eyes. So I just use, um, a primer I'll link below and I'm gonna prime my eyelids because I like to use my highlight on my eyelids to even out my lids and then I'll apply eyeshadow and I will show you how I use this one compact for my entire face all right so let's get started I am gonna go in with the B squared brush so this is a blush bronzer brush okay and my first step is a color corrector. So if you weren't color matched to a color corrector, you can completely skip this step. But no matter what, I always recommend doing your first layer of makeup with this method, okay? And that's gonna help you build up to a full coverage without ever getting the issue of being heavy handed, um, feeling like your makeup is heavy or sticky or tacky or anything like that, okay? So my recommendation is um, using a color corrector if you need one in order to build up to the best coverage. So for mine, that is my darkest shade. So darkest shade highlight first, okay? Now this is the method I use to get full coverage everywhere. Not full coverage, but more like medium to full coverage. Um, if you are one of those lucky people that don't need extra coverage on your contour areas, you can do contour first. So our 3D foundation, our contours and our highlights provide coverage. Um, you're gonna get extra coverage if you layer. So I'm gonna be layering highlights and then I'm gonna put my contour over that so that I get extra coverage underneath. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Biggest issue I see people doing is they go in with their creams and they swipe in and then they have so much on their brush they could do their full face, okay? These creams are extremely pigmented compared to traditional foundations. Just think less is more and like even less than you even think, 
less than that. Like it is so little, it takes some time for you to get used to and for you to figure out that, yeah, I was using too much. Everyone I've ever met that has tried this makeup starts out using too much, so you're not alone. But um, when you first get your creams and you pop them out of the tins, just know that there's usually a protective film. Now it's not like thick or anything like that, but it is a layer that protects your creams from drying out um, while they're in storage or in a warehouse, okay? So knowing that, I sometimes will rub my finger over the top of them just to kind of break up that top layer and get to the goods, okay? So um, your creams are tacky, okay? That is how they should be. Um, your contours are much drier, all right? And then you'll notice your illuminator and your Bella bronzer are much creamier. Um, your lip and cheeks change depending on the formulation you purchased. So there's mattes, there is satins, and there's glossy, and they're all different kind of consistency. Um, while you're putting on your face, you can put on your lip conditioner so your lips will be good to go by the time we get there. So, all right, we have our blush bronzer brush, we are going to be using the blush side to apply our highlight and I am going to tap. That's it. Do you see how much product you got on your brush? That is good for an entire area of my face. Okay. So sometimes I like to press on and kind of let it warm up on my skin because I feel like the warmth of your face will let them meld in a lot better. Sometimes I just go straight in buffing. Okay, and I am just buffing this color on my problem area. So if you can tell from my face, I have redness across this area and then also on the edge of my chin and on my forehead. Now, my redness is not crazy, but I get so much better coverage using this method of more than one highlight. So don't be scared if I color match you to more than one. It's simple as dipping here or here. It's not going to take any more time or be any more difficult, okay? So I'm just gonna buff this on anywhere I need it so my nose is darker. Buffing simply means small circular motions. And this is the best brush because it is slightly looser um, a lot of our brushes, like the Buffy, are very dense, like they don't move much, okay? They don't buff as easily. This brush, um, the slightly looser bristles are really good to buff in and make sure you're not being too heavy handed, okay? So just remember, tap in if you need more slightly buff in a little bit more. The key is you should not be seeing the makeup sitting on your skin. If you can see it, you're adding too much, okay? Now, obviously it's giving coverage, as you can tell, but um, you can't see like a big streak of orange or yellow on my skin. And this color, when you pop it out of tin, looks orange and can be scary and intimidating, but our shades look completely different than the photos online, than they look in the tin, because when they go in on your skin, they sheer out and they, they just are magical. I don't even know how to describe it. It's so good. So I have a thin layer of mango right where I need it. Now, I like to cover up all the purple tones around my eyes and my spot of hyperpigmentation. This brush gives such a light layer, I like to tap in with my finger, okay? And then I just press on, and I use the warmth of my finger to give additional coverage to that area. Do you see how it disappeared, okay? I do the same thing around my eyes because it's hard to get in those very inner corners, okay? And I do a layer thin layer and I use the warmth of my finger to blend it in under my eyes. Okay, can you see the difference there? Okay, same thing with this side. So don't be afraid to use your fingers 
Um, if you do want to just stick to a brush, this brush is really hard to get close to your eye in my opinion, because if you do have dark circles, you want to go all the way up to that lash line to really cancel out those dark tones. So anywhere you need a little bit extra coverage, don't be scared to tap it on. Now it's not so thick that I can see it and that's when I know I'm good. Okay, so when you're first starting out, I recommend using this every layer, okay? So I am simply pouncing, okay? I'm not sweeping, I'm not swiping, I'm pressing it over the skin to press it into the skin and remove excess. This is why you want it barely damp, okay? Not wet, just cold to the touch. If it's wet, it would pull off my makeup in patches. If it's dry, it's gonna press it in slightly, but it's not gonna remove any excess, and we want it to do both. So, golden, okay? I already have some good coverage going on. Now, if you like a natural finish and you have one main highlight shade, same thing. Use this into the brush, buff it all over, and you will have your natural finish, okay? Finish up with the perfecter, and then you can go on to the next step, okay? I have a main shade. Now, if you have a mango or a different color corrector that is much darker than your skin, I know it's kind of hard to tell for me. I can wear this shade all over, uh, depending on how much I've self-tanned. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell that that shade is darker than my, my normal skin tone, but it is by one shade but I just kept it light. So the key to using a color corrector is making sure you're buffing in a very small amount, okay? Think less is more. Then you can go in with your main shade to actually match the rest of your face. So I'm going in right over where I applied my color corrector. Okay, notice I'm pressing this brush on, okay? I'm not buffing, okay? If I was to buff, I would move all that color corrector I just placed, okay? So pressing with this brush isn't gonna give you as full of coverage as say a brush like the Buffy, which I recommend pressing on for a fuller coverage, okay? So you would use this one first to do a thin layer, buff it all over to the face, all over the face, and then you can press on your second layer or anywhere you need more coverage with a brush like this to give full coverage. So in my opinion, this brush will, even pressing it on, is still a pretty natural finish. It's not as full coverage. I would say it's probably more medium coverage using this method, if that helps you decide what you like. So I'm pressing it all over, really moving that around, okay? Not getting it all in one spot to make sure it is blended because this is pressing it into the skin and blending it as I go as well. So this is my main highlight. This is gonna tone down the warmth of that color corrector that I used for my redness and hyperpigmentation and dark circles, okay? It works on acne, blemishes, any of those things as well. The key is to keeping it light so you can't see it through your main shade. Okay, I'm golden. I don't know if I did my eyelids. So this is why I use my eye primer first because creams will crease on my eyelids otherwise, but I need to color correct that area as well. Okay, so we are finished with the B Square brush for now, but we will come back to it. And next brush I recommend for beginners and anyone that ever has any issues with getting their contour just right, the Detail Hack. This was a game changer for me as far as contouring goes. It's just so good. So. Okay, so the first time you dip into your contour, remember it's dry, it's got that film. Warm it up with your fingers if you need to, but whereas the highlights, you wanna barely tap to get that product on the brush, 
the contours are drier, especially certain ones like olive or even drier. I'm using Astoria, which I feel like is slightly creamier, but not much. And I'm gonna show you how I get my brush loaded, okay? And how you have to use more force to get the color on your brush with this, okay? So I like to hold my compact, okay? They're laid on the table, whatever. I always load, no matter what brush I'm using for contour, I do it at an angle because depending on the size of your face, okay? I This would give me too wide of a line, okay? I like to do half of my brush. So if you, the, these brushes are so multi-purpose, you can use them in so many ways. I do the same thing and I can contour with this brush. I just don't get it on the entire brush to make too large of a stripe on my face. I use it at an okay, angle. Here we go, we're ready to load our brush. I am going to pounce my brush with some pressure to get that on the brush. If you cannot see it on your brush well, you don't have enough on your brush, okay? Um, I often get asked because people are saying, I can't see my contour. If you, I can wear almost every shade of contour even though I'm not super fair skinned because it's all about getting enough on your brush, okay? So, we are ready to contour. Let's talk a little bit about contour placement. So, we're gonna start with the cheeks because it's the hardest part, okay? Think of an imaginary line. You can even roll something under your cheekbone if needed, but it goes about almost to the top of your ear to the corner of your mouth. That is the imaginary line that your cheekbone runs, okay? That is what we wanna stay along and we don't wanna go under this line, okay? Going under the line means it's gonna pull your face down, okay? We're wanting to lift our cheekbones. Now going above that is fine. We're always going to blend upwards to have it naturally blend into our lip and cheek color and look more natural, okay? Without that lip and cheek, it, it doesn't look the same. It looks unnatural and it looks more like a stripe on your face. So don't judge your contour till you finish your full face because I promise it looks much better once you finish the whole process. Okay, so we're ready to apply along that line, okay? My other thing is where to stop, okay? If you were to apply all the way to the corner of your mouth, that's not natural either. First of all, our, our cheekbones stop right about here, okay? Any farther looks odd, for one. We don't have a cheekbone down to the corner of our mouth. And we're gonna get inside our small lines, which makes women look like they have a mustache, okay? We don't want shadow here. That is like a no-no, right? So we want to keep it concentrated right here. So my rule of thumb is the corner of your eye. And this works on all face shapes, okay? The only issue that can change is the angle, okay? Depending on the si the shape of your face, if you're wanting it to look longer, you can go more at an angle, okay? Or if you want it to look wider, if you have a very thin face, you can go more slanted this way. But the general rule is if you follow the natural shape of your face going from the corner of your mouth to the top of your ear, you're gonna be in the right direction, okay? Stop about the corner of your eye, it'll naturally blend in slightly, and that's gonna give you the most natural looking contour and give you the ultimate lift for your cheekbones, which I think is what everybody wants, right? Okay, so when it comes to actually placing the color with the detail, this is what I like to say. I like to say stop, or stop. I like to say start in your hairline, okay? Naturally, if you're looking at your face, where's the darkest part of your shadow gonna be? It's gonna be back here. It's not gonna be here. If you start right on the side of your cheek, you're gonna get the darkest part of your shadow here, which doesn't look natural. In fact, it looks like you have contour on your okay, cheek. Okay, so naturally, you're darker here. So start pressing, following that imaginary line towards the corner of your mouth, stopping about, ooh, I went a little too far. This is what happens when I'm trying to talk at the same time. So stopping about the corner of your eye, see how I went too far? That's fine. We can fix it. Creams have no mistakes. Okay, so 
there you go. I just simply pressed. In fact, I still have color on my brush because I pounced in quite a few times trying to show you guys. So we are totally golden. So I'm not, I don't want to drag it down, but I'm going to still apply that color. I'm going to move slightly upwards and I'm going to just keep pressing. Okay. This is starting the blending process already because with this brush, you don't have to go like this to blend. Okay. You can simply keep pressing. Okay. So I'm moving my brush upwards. You don't want to go too high. Obviously you don't want contour up here by your eye, but you simply can just go right along that line, slightly going upwards, keep pressing and it's going to blend out. Okay. Now for this area down here where it's too, I don't know if I clean my brush off where it's a little too, in my opinion, it's a little too dark right here. I'm going to flip it around to the other side, which is clean. And I'm simply going to blur that edge and pull it back slightly. You can do the same thing using that brush you just used highlight on. Notice though, it, I mean, you might be able to see a little bit, but our brushes are designed to not hold onto the creams. Okay. So there's not going to be much on the brush, but this brush is great at blending by just simply pressing. You can even sweep it if you get too low to kind of clean up that line. And look at that. Okay. These creams don't set. So you have plenty of time to fix any mistake. And honestly, they blend out so easily. The biggest mistake is over blending. So you want to carefully pull it back where you want it to go. Okay. That's the hardest part right there is the cheek. And the longer you contour, the more times you try it, the more comfortable you'll be with a more defined contour and having that look on your face. And then you'll wonder how you went without it. So I do like my contour more defined. If you find that line too sharp, just simply use this brush, press along that line. Don't sweep, press, and it's going to blur the edges. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side because by now I have no contour left on my brush. Okay. I'm just going to tap it a few times. Start at the ear along that line. Keep pressing. You can also kind of flick the brush upwards to kind of blur that line. I tend to press, but either way. Now this is also good, a very good brush. If you have anything under this contour that you color corrected. So say you had spots of hyperpigmentation right there and um, you don't want to then apply your contour and then go like this, you're going to be moving that color corrector and then you're not going to have the coverage on those areas that you just spent all that time color correcting. So whereas I have one right here, if I go too far and pull, it's going to pull that off. So learning to contour by simply pressing is not going to pull all that off. So this is why I pretty much have gotten into the habit to where I apply my full face pretty much just pressing. Now you'll see like my forehead, I do sweep a little because I don't have anything there that I have to worry about. Same thing, pounce into that color. Forehead is much easier, okay. You can press it on. Okay. I tend to be a little bit more heavy handed on my forehead. Okay. See how I have a, like a white stripe where my, where my hairline is. Okay. So my thing with foreheads is I blend up into my hairline. Okay. Now foreheads are one of those things that it is completely personal preference. If you have a small forehead, you don't have to contour at all. If you have like a very short forehead, I have a very large forehead. So I'm going to pull that color down and I can even apply it farther down in order to give the illusion of a shorter forehead. Okay. I also have a pretty wide forehead. So I go all the way down almost to my temples. Whereas if you have a more narrow forehead, you can keep the color just right here. It is only however you want it. So I'm going to press 
and then press and pull to blend those edges. The hardest part about foreheads, I think, is just making sure you're blended and you don't see an obvious line. You want it to kind of ombre almost, going from highlighted areas to darker and you're framing your face with that shadow. You're not exactly like, it's not gonna be as chiseled as your cheek contour, if that makes sense. Okay, jawline, jawline's super easy. You just wanna go up under the jaw again darkest part of your your jaw shadow would be back here behind your ear okay on this part so I simply just kind of start there and I pull it under now again this is not necessarily required if you have a very strong jaw um, or if you don't have any jaw at all and it looks more obvious on you play with it or try maybe you can even use a different color contour if it's too obvious, but I like to use it for the sheer fact that it helps blur. So if you use, you know, obviously I'm using highlight on my face here and I'm not putting anything on my neck, but as I blend that down, I don't have any obvious lines and my neck and face keep matching. Another common thing with necks is sometimes your neck might be much lighter than your face. The easiest thing for that is Bella bronzer. So I will show how I bronze the rest of my face later, but since we're talking about necks, let's go ahead and do that. So I have Bella in my compact. Bella is not to be confused with contour, it's actually warm, okay? And contour, and it's creamy, so our contours are dry. This baby go a little goes a long way. I simply tap in with the bronzer end of my brush. Okay, and then you can just swirl it down your neck. Okay, this is the easiest and fastest way to keep everything matching. So you can tell on me, I'm slightly lighter right here. So I'm going to simply bronze that a little bit. So it's not very obvious. Okay. Now you can bronze at this step. I like to do it after my lip and cheek, so I'll show you how I do that. But there you go, now I'm all matching. It's the quickest and easiest way to kind of just give a little bit of warmth to tie into your face. Um, and obviously you can do the opposite if your neck and chest is darker and warmer than your face, your face is lighter, I'd recommend just bronzing the face to bring in that natural warmth that you already have. Okay, so we're contoured. We're gonna do a quick nose hack so I can show you how easily it is with this detail brush. Um, with noses, my biggest thing is just using a cool tone contour. I wouldn't recommend this with probably indigo or olive or stone or walnut because those have warmth in them and they will pull red on your nose. So I'm simply going to get a little, you probably can't even see, a little bit on the edge. So again, use these brushes to their advantage, to the shape of them, and I'm just getting it on the edge, okay? And I'm gonna use that straight edge to help me draw a straight line because, let's be real, I can't do it. So I'm going to look at my nose where it starts curving downward, and I'm going to just kind of press that right there. It's like already drawing me a line, and I'm just gonna kind of pull downwards. So I got about half of a line because my nose is weirdly shaped and doesn't like to do the full thing, but um, we're going to do that as close together as possible without touching. The closer together you get, the thinner your nose is going to appear. So I then like to flip it around to the small side, get a little bit more of my brush and kind of take that line and pull it all the way up as I blend to the eyebrow, all the way down to the tip. Same with the other side. The thing with uh, nose contours is it's not a, even the contour that does the most difference. It is the highlight. Okay, so I've got some stripes on there. You can see that um, when we accent brighten, I will show you how it changes. So we're already ready for that step. 
back to the detail hack. I just used this in for contour. Oh, one more place you can contour under the lip is easy way to make your lower lip look bigger and make it look like you had lip injections. Okay. Um, all right. Same brush. I'm not even going to wipe off the end that I just used with contour. If you want to see, it does not show up. Okay. So, um, again, these brushes are meant to not hold on to product and transfer and muddy up. So that's why you can do your full face with one brush if you want. Okay. So I have used almost all the colors in here. Now I'm going to go with my lightest. Now this is my accent brightener. Okay. So this is what's going to really brighten under my eyes and add that pop to the center of my face. This is what like will bring attention to your eyes. So think of it like a diamond. Those are the only places we're going to brighten. Okay. Right here. Okay. We'll go ahead and do the center first so you guys can see that. So I'm going to go to the center of my forehead and I am tapping and I'm just going to use this small part. Okay. The forehead is like an upside down triangle. So if I can put it on thick enough so you guys can see it, I usually don't put this one on very thick. If you notice up close, you will see pores if you put it on too thick. So, um, we still have our perfecter, so no worries. But go ahead and do an upside down triangle going in between the brows and right there in the middle of the forehead. And we're going to follow that down. And we're going to do a thin line right in between that nose contour. Kind of blend up. I'm trying not to blend as I go. Okay, right on the Cupid's bow. and then the center of the chin. Now this is key if you have a lighter neck and you don't wanna use Bella, you really are gonna to have to bring in those lighter tones in your face and making sure your chin isn't too warm compared to your neck because obviously those two are right next to each other. So you might have to use more of your brightener color in order to bring in those lighter tones and, and you know keep everything matching and tied together. Okay, so more, this one is going to be under the eyes. So I like to really concentrate it right there because that is what's gonna give you the biggest pop to under your eyes. Okay, now if you have more mature skin, I recommend concentrating your triangle right in here, going kind of down the nose and right on this I don't know what to call it. this part right here and then blurring out. Okay. Avoiding where we all have the most lines. Okay. Which is right there. If you don't have more mature skin or you try it and this works better for you, um, we're going to do the triangle of light. So that is going all the way under the eye. Then from the corner of the eye down to the nose and then you're gonna fill in. So we're gonna go all the way up to the nose contour and I'm just gonna press on, okay? I'm trying not to sweep my brush because I already laid two shades down, my color corrector, my main shade to kind of bridge that gap and now we're doing the brightener. If you try to go in straight with the brightener and no darker colors underneath, it, this brightener is not gonna match your skin tone and you will see nothing but texture and it's not going to look pretty. Okay. So you have to layer shades in order to wear lighter colors with this makeup. It is not like traditional makeup. Okay. So younger skin, more mature skin. And I probably lay that on way too thick, but just think a smaller triangle right there. Okay. So I want them to match obviously. So I'm going to go over here. And now I have more mature skin under my eyes, but using the right color sometimes is making, will make all the difference and your perfecter. So we're going to get into that next. So that is going to brighten and we are in our magical diamond. Okay. Bringing attention to the eyes. All right. So again, 
perfecter at every step. So I went ahead and did my main shade and contoured and I didn't blend yet. You can blend after your contour. What I like to do is I like to add my accent because I know exactly how much to add. This is very heavy handed. I don't recommend doing this. I'm doing this for the sake of visualization purposes only. You shouldn't be able to see it this thick on your face. I mean, that is way too much. Now, I can perfect it enough so that it's not gonna look like makeup and it's gonna look like skin. You're just gonna have to perfect more. So, as you can see there, I can still see it, okay? Um, press it all over the face. Now, if you want to blur these lines, press it everywhere. I recommend pressing everywhere in order to give you that more airbrush look, okay? But anywhere you layer more than one highlight, it is like a must do. Like, I don't recommend trying this makeup and wearing more than one shade without the perfector and without doing it this way. Or it's gonna look like you have on heavy makeup. And that's one of the biggest things I hear from people and that's because they're not using their perfector in the right way, okay? And I'm moving this around as I feel it getting dry, drier, because it's obviously picking up product Okay, and I'm just pressing it all over and look at that difference it already made. Okay, picking up excess. Now, under the eyes, I am very generous with this because I have a lot of fine lines and if I don't get all the excess off, because I layered three shades, I will get creasing. Okay, so I'll show you how I avoid that as well. Okay, so. I don't know if you can see really close. I still have some setting in my lines. So don't think that I can just press it on a couple times. Really utilize it. Now, then in this area right here is also a problem area for me. Okay. Once I feel like it's good, I also use the warmth of my fingers to make sure I don't have any creasing and that is distributed really well. Under eyes are my biggest issue, so don't be scared to just keep going. All right. Now is when I like to powder because I just did all that work on my under eyes. I'm going to powder them so they don't move before they crease again because they even say like don't even look down after you get your creases out um, or you're going to get creases again. Now ours doesn't set so you have time. You can finish your face and then do it last um, as well but you're going to probably have to pat those back out and then set. So. We'll go ahead and do that. All right, um, what is next? We're gonna pick back up the blush and bronzer brush and I'm gonna go ahead and add some color to my cheeks. So I like to do this after I brighten because I don't wanna cover up any of my lip and cheek with my brightener. I wanna make sure my eyes get brightened and I wanna place my blush right where it needs to be so I don't have to fix it if that makes sense. So I went ahead and put two in my palette. So I love this makeup because you can totally like pick a matte, more pigmented and grab like a more sheer gloss and I layer everything. So I, I like glossy on my lips. So I have Frenchie. Okay. This is a matte, but it's a very creamy matte and I'm going to tap in a couple times and I'm going to look at the apples of my cheeks. So I'm going to smile. Okay. Look, when you smile and then you, you put your face, it, it, it drags it down. Right? So I'm going to look at the apples of my cheeks. I'm going to go to the outside. Otherwise it's going to be below my nose. So they say 
to look younger go above your nose, okay, when you do your lip and cheek color. So I'm gonna go right there and then I'm gonna follow my contour line and I'm gonna make sure those two are connected. If there's a space in between, then it looks odd and it's not naturally fading into, is that the word? Okay, I kinda go around my cheeks here and then on up my contour. And as you can see, I'm pressing because I don't wanna move my color corrector, my hyperpigmentation, anything like that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and apply bronzer now. So I love Bella. So Bella, I'm gonna kinda tap in. Now on my face, this is what I like to do. So I like to keep all those areas we just highlighted bright, okay? We just accent brightened those. So think of where your the sun naturally hits your face and where you have the most warmth. And normally it's a, across the bridge of your nose on your cheeks and in this area. And we're gonna keep the center of our forehead light where we just brightened. So I go like a C formation. I go right over that lip and cheek. And again, I'm pressing. Now you can swirl if you did not have to color correct. And that is absolutely fine. So I'm simply just giving a little bit of warmth to my face. Can you tell the difference? Okay, now be careful with Bella. A little goes a long way when you get a brand new Bella and it's super creamy. Okay, you can go a little bit across the nose. You can do your chin if you want. I like to sometimes darken this right here. Okay, so we are bronzed and I'm gonna go back to a lip and cheek because I like to layer glow. So this was a matte shade. If you like a fully matte look, I recommend getting a matte lip and cheek. And then at this step, you can powder. And I'd recommend powdering all over, okay? Um, you can skip your blush if you don't want it to be kind of toned down or you can apply your blush heavier because after about five minutes as this warms up on the skin, it's gonna get a little bit more muted. It's gonna kind of die down. Um, so I recommend if you feel like your blush is fading, it with a little bit heavier hand and powder over that and it will last a lot longer. I like a very toned down blush, but I like mine to glow and I want glow along my cheeks. So I'm going to, now that I've already added my Bella, I'm going to go back in and add a glossy lip and cheek because I didn't want to add my Bella over something that's kind of sticky. Now, if you don't like um, a, a stickiness at all on your face, I don't recommend our glossy lip and cheeks because they will kind of just leave that area you added them. They will leave them a little bit stickier. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of Sunshine State right over that. And it's a really sheer one with some gold glow. So can you see that glow? And it just, I feel like it makes my skin look younger and I can take all that that I can get. <laughs> so I'm applying that right over the top for some added glow. And then I am going to go ahead and powder my eyes and anywhere I want powdered next. So when it comes to the very final steps in the makeup, you want to make sure you do it in the proper order to get the results you want. So, like I said before, if you want matte, you can powder your whole face after you're done with all of your creams. And then I recommend doing the illuminator step last so you don't powder over it and die, and die down that glow. Um, for me, I usually will powder under my eyes and then I spray my entire face with setting spray because our setting sprays give a dewy finish. I feel like about 99% of people like part matte, part dewy. So they want certain areas of their face to glow and they want certain areas like their T-zone to be matte. So I'm gonna show you that method. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my stay spray again, and I'm gonna give a generous dose across my entire face and let that dry. Okay, so you can tell it's kind of all over. <laughs> and you wanna let that dry. So both of our setting sprays, both of our stay setting sprays give a dewy look to the skin. So if you don't like that, um, I would stay away from it, but it does help the makeup stay. So while that is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and do my lips. So one of the things I love about this makeup is that it is so versatile. So I'm gonna use my contour and I'm going to line my lips, okay? I'm gonna use the multitasker brush. I'm gonna use the small end to line. So I'm going to line, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to take a little bit of that contour. In the outer corners. And kind of blend it out. Okay. And then I'm gonna pick up some of my Frenchie. Okay, and if you like matte lips, you can end right there. I'm not a matte lover, I need the gloss in my life. So if you want clear, you can use our lip conditioner over, over it. I am gonna use that glowy lip and cheek and I'm gonna use Sunshine State over the entire thing. Okay, I'm then going to go to the illuminator I have in here and I'm gonna just pop a little bit on my cubis bow and I'm done with my lips. Now, we are finally ready to powder. Now, since I didn't powder earlier, I already have creasing, <laughs> told you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and pat that out first. Make sure I have no creasing because once you powder it, it is locked in place and we don't want to lock in creases. No, 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 we don't. Okay, I'm gonna pick up the power powder brush and I'm gonna gently touch, just touch my vanilla dust, which is our translucent setting powder. And I'm going to just press it right in that triangle, okay? Now this is my favorite method because I know our setting powder is very finely milled and it won't give me any dryness or creping or cakiness or anything like that. If you don't have that brush, you can also use the Perfector. My biggest issue is that is way too much. So um, I don't ever sweep into it. If anything, I will just gently touch it and then apply, okay? Um, remember, less is more with setting powder. If you're having any issues with your under eyes, I have an entire very in-depth video on under eyes because that is like, everyone's biggest problem area. So when it comes to your eyelids, if you have oily eyelids like me, I had applied all that highlight to even it out. I can be very generous with my setting powder. This is how I prep my lids to be ready for eyeshadow. And then I'm generous with my setting powder there. So I'm ready for my eye makeup. Okay. Very last step, so with mascara's 3D foundation, we have a highlight, contour, lip and cheek, and an illuminator. So there's a lot of different choices. I have been using the perfumes ever since they came out because Rose Gold was my favorite cream illuminator and this is like double duty. I will, I will use anything that can multitask in my palette. So 
I'm gonna use my perfector, okay? So this one is a very creamy cream, <laughs> unlike some of our others. But one of the biggest things is just making sure you are swiping in enough to really load your perfector. And then I like to press on so it pretty much blends it at the same time as it applies it. Using your finger, you can sometimes look later and be like, I have fingerprints. So, and then I can blend it out. Okay, I can also add it to my collarbone, behind my ears, my wrists, anywhere I want that scent and I'm obsessed with the glow. So I have used all of the creams in my mini double decker. Now I am going to finish up real quick um, with my eyes and I'll fast forward it so you don't have to watch, but I will let you know what I used. guys that is it hopefully that helped answer some of your questions for starting out with this may so don't forget it can take up to two to three weeks depending on your skin type for your skin to adjust to the extra moisture that's in our creams so Be mindful of that and otherwise just remember less is more so Buff in that that first layer, color corrector, or your main shade. Build up to that full coverage if that's what you like. Press on more just where you need it. Don't be scared of contour. Play with it and practice. My biggest recommendation is to experiment with this makeup. That is what is going to teach you like what you like and versus what you don't like. What might be my favorite way of applying might not be what works best for you. Um, everyone has different skin types and different preferences. So hopefully that helped you give you an idea of where to start to start experimenting. And thank you all for watching and I will see you guys next week. Love you. Bye.